Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today we have to see photos that literally defined years in our history. We're starting off with this first one, the 1918 Spanish flu. During the influenza epidemic in 1918, quarantine centers and emergency military hospitals like the one we are seeing here in Camp Funson in Kansas were constructed at various outposts through the USA. A third of the world's population was actually infected and at least 50 million people died. In the US alone, 675,000 people approximately died of the Spanish flu, making the Spanish flu among the deadliest outbreaks in the human history. This iconic photograph is uh, from a collection belonging to the National Museum of Health and Medicine, Armed Forces Institute of Pathology, Washington, D.C. This, guys, was quite a strong pandemic back in the day, almost like more than 100 years ago. 1919, Vladimir Lenin speaking to the crowd. In 1918, the Soviet Union recently formed the Sovankom government, established a branch of the armed forces, dubbed the Red Army. The following year, the Russian revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin celebrated the first anniversary of the army's foundation in the Red Square of Moscow. In this very famous image, brought over from Russia by Dr. W.A. Vovchin, he makes an impression passion speech to the servicemen over there, calling out them to stay together for the glory and the safety of Russia. 1922 guys, Howard Carter examines the King Tutankhamun's mummy. In 1922, the British archaeologist Howard Carter discovered the King Tut's tomb a large ancient Egyptian vault containing a boy pharaoh who had previously been shrouded in absolute mystery. The tomb which held the mummified remains of the Tutankhamun, King Tut, unveiled new archaeological mysteries even as it solves others. In this image from the New York Times photo archive, Carter is pictured examining the remains after the actual ex excavation or exhumation, call it however you want. Here we have a very controversial woman back in the day just because the way she would behave in certain aspects in the society of the 20s. This is 1926 Suzanne Lenglen. Long before Serena and Venus Williams soared to the international fame, there was Suzanne Lenglen, a French tennis player who captivated the world in the 1920s with her controversial habits that actually included wearing red lipstick, drinking alcohol, cursing, exposing her bare arms, and the donning skirts above the calves. That's right, the ball tennis player or star who has been called the most polarizing women's tennis player in her generation was the first to shirk the bulk tennis undergarments of the time. From age 15 onwards, Lenglen won 250 championships over her 12-year career, which is quite crazy. She is pictured here at Wimbledon in this photo from Houghton Archives. Yes, right, a woman who, you know, wanted to play the way she wanted and actually didn't give a crap about what people thought about her, which is exactly what people should do. Just follow your own path, follow your dreams, and that's it. Here we have also another very influential and powerful woman. This is 1928, Amelia Earhart with an airplane. Five years after Charles uh, Lingert transatlantic flight, Amelia Earhart became the second person to make the voyage, the transatlantic voyage. She was also the first woman to attempt the journey flying from Newfoundland, Canada to Lonbury in Northern Ireland. In 1937, just five years after her historical journey, the intrepid aviator disappeared, unfortunately, over the Pacific Ocean while she was attempting to fly around the world. Her plane was actually never found, and the mystery continues to intrigue history and aviation fans altogether. In this photo from Getty Images, her heart poses in front of her biplane. Here we have have a very unique one which I'm pretty sure most of you guys actually have not seen it. This is the Statue of Liberty's actual head. That's right, the aerial view of the head. 
1930, the Statue of Liberty was a gift from France to the United States of America to celebrate their alliance during the American Revolution. Initially planned to be unveiled in 1876 in conjunction with the National Centennial, the statue was eventually completed in 1885. Although the monument was considered a gift, the planning and funding effort were a joint collaboration. In this Get Images photo taken from the statue's torch, a group of people can be seen leaning out of the window. So yeah, quite interesting, isn't it? Here we have a photo of uh, the old man Hitler in the crowd. From 1933 to 1938, the Nazi party held propaganda events every year in Bavaria known collectively as the Nuremberg rallies. These were marked by torchlight processions and impassioned speeches from the Nazi leaders, including of course the all-known <laughs> historical person Adolf Hitler, who had recently become the German Chancellor. In this Getty photo from 1933, Hitler can be seen greeting supporters doing a rally of such, and as you can see, people are very fervent of this uh, group, because back in the day, in 1930s, the Nazi group was quite influential, or better said, the most influential party in Germany. Here we have, guys, the Hindenburg disaster. Some of you guys know it, some of you guys have no clue about this. In 1937, 36 passengers and crew members were actually killed when the Hindenburg airship, the largest ever built, caught by fire, literally, in midair. The event served as the origin of the phase O oh, the humanity, after NBC radio announcer Herb Morrison shouted it in the air. This quite iconic photo was taken as the airship became engulfed literally in flames. 1941, a destroyer explodes. Now, on the 7th of December 1941, the Japanese forces attacked Pearl Harbor, killing 2,335 military servicemen and 68 civilians. The World War II event, which President Roosevelt declares a date will live in infamy, changed America's attitudes about the war. The American destroyer USS Nick Shaw is under attack in this photo from the Getty Images. Also during the Second World War, there was something quite strong which happened back in the day. In 1942, it was the internment of Japanese Americans. Two months after the attack of Pearl Harbor, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, which allowed US military to create areas from which any or all persons may be excluded. The move prompted the internment of more than 127,000 Japanese American citizens. In this haunting photo by American photojournalist Dorothea Lange, a Japanese American family awaits relocation to the internment camp near Hayward just because they were Japanese and I don't know if to protect them or to make sure that they are not spies. It could be, could be both, to be honest. Here we have the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, 1943. After Germany invaded Poland in 1939, more than 400,000 Jews were rounded up and placed in a one square mile area in the city. By 1943, after witnessing the deportation of hundreds of thousands of Jews and the murders of countless other people, the remaining ghetto residents stagged an uprising. This photo was captured during the revolt as part of the SS German General Jürgen uh, Strupp's daily report of the Hendrik Himmler, the Third Reich's second most powerful leader. 1944, the liberation of Paris. That's right guys, on August 25th, 1944, a historical picture that everyone should see once in their life. The French 2nd Armored Division and the US 4th Infantry Division liberated Paris from the Nazi rule after four years of German occupation. Just before the city was liberated, Adolf Hitler ordered the Gen General Dietrich von Scholz to destroy the city's landmarks and burn the city down. The German commander refused to carry out the order. This photo taken by Jack Downey shows crowds lining up in the Champs-Élysées as Allied tanks pass through the Arc of the Triumph. Of course, why would you want to destroy the landmarks of a city if you know that you are going to lose the war? That is just insanity and this general had a bit of common sense by not following the orders of the madman. 
Now this one is quite a intense one. This is guys a bed of shells 1950. A brutal war was fought in Korea from 1950 to 1953 after the northern forces allied with the Soviet Union breached the north-south boundary. A month later America joined the fight alongside South Korea in its continued war against the communism. Throughout the course of the Korean War, roughly 5 million soldiers and civilians were killed. In this photo from the Getty Images, an American soldier slips literally on top of ammunition. That is just insanity. The Hungarian Revolution 1956 In October 1956, Hungarian rebels launched a crazy revolt against the Soviet forces. The rebels won the first battle, declaring former Premier uh, Imre Nagy head of state and requesting intervention from the United States. The next month, however, Soviet aggressors stormed back in. In this image from Gaber B. Rux, the head of the From Stalin statue can be seen in the street after rebels toppled the, the monument. As you can see, people back in the day, they were quite aggressively wanting their independence as much as possible. This guy is a Boeing interior in 1958. That's right, unveiled in 1958, the Boeing 707 is said to have revolutionized air travel. The colossal jet airliner, which could hold 165 economy class passengers, was owned by Pan Am. This keystone photo shows a small service crew performing test flights over Britain. Quite intense, isn't it? This, guys, is the beginning of the mass flight system which we are now seeing in today's age. And because of this, guys, this helped create the economy flights which we all love and use on a almost like a daily basis every single, every single year now for everyone. 1961, the Berlin War was starting to be erected. In this image taken in Berlin, German, uh, Germany in August 14, 1961, soldiers of the East German National People's Army erect barbed wire fences to close off a street in preparation for the construction of the Berlin Wall. The first concrete emplacements uh, were erected on August the 17th and would remain in place until 1989. And we're going to finish off with this very interesting and powerful photo. This is 1966, China's Youth Cultural Revolution. In 1966, uh, chairman of the Chinese Communist Party Mao Zedong published a little red book outlining the, his ideas for the Cultural Revolution. Students who joined the revolution pictured here in this Getty photo were called the Red Guards and worked to bring down Zedong's political foes. That's right, so as you can see here, a single person can influence millions of people just by writing a document and by effectively changing the ideas of those people to do whatever he wants to bring change to a nation, to the world, or just to a group of people. So guys, that's it for today's showcase of these very interesting historical photos. As always, make sure to subscribe to the channel, guys, and activate the notification bell. And as always, I shall see you later in the next uploads.